Jason Bateman's six sucks. What? What? Oh, yes. Being si- that's a, like a tongue twister, right? Si- six, six, six. I thought you six. said Jason. Sex sucks. I'm like, Se- Jason, sex doing is it terrible. Wrong. It's terrible. You just forgot how to do it. It hurts. You, you got to turn around backwards. You got to bend your what? bend your legs in the wrong direction. Mm. I don't know. There was a there's a light in the sky for someone who spends I was so taken much up in the time on the internet. You'd think that you would understand the basic mechanics of this that's i learned from the internet right oh dude wrong sites oh, okay well wrong hey, sites. <laughs> welcome everybody to the rage select podcast i am jeff i'm jason um <laughs> this one may be a little bit shorter this week just because i've i'm like super hopped up on cold medicine Woo. uh yeah but we've got some news we've got some emails we've got all that stuff but before we get started you know what this entire week we haven't uh covered uh, the the topic du jour, which is Valentine's Day, is this week. Oh. I know that you don't care because you're married. Yep. So you and your wife Guaranteed just play ass. Minecraft on Valentine's Day. Is that what you do? You eat chili cheese fries and play uh, Minecraft. We we are probably going to eat chili cheese fries. Okay. Uh, we are going to be playing some video games. All right. Together. So what are you uh, now that you're done? Are you done with Diablo? Or are you still? Is that um, your multiplayer game? D- 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 per- yeah. We we, uh, we haven't we haven't played Diablo in a while. We're kind of done with Minecraft. We might do uh, Lego Marvel uh, and uh, play some Fable, the anniversary edition. Okay. Only because I have to. Okay. Well, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're going to watch some movies. I think we're going to watch like Ender's Game, you know. Just okay. Hang out and be lazy. That sounds cool. Yeah. I'm trying to decide. Um, see, this this podcast will probably go up actually the day after Valentine's Day. Okay. Um, but I'm trying to decide whether I should... Uh, Order a pizza, get real high, mm-hmm. and just like sit around. Yeah. Or uh, whether I should do that thing where you go out and look for the desperate, do it, desperate women out on that one. On uh, well, yes. Don't call me when your kidneys are gone. <laughs> uh huh. You wake up in a bathtub full of ice. Full of ice. Well, you know that's the weird thing is that I, you know, as we mentioned in Bulletstorm last week, we've been trying <laughs> out some of this. This is the dating stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. And like, um, I, I was this week. I was this close. To making that fatal mistake of, like, I was trying to go out with this girl, and we kind of missed our chance last weekend, yes. and we're working this week. And I was like, all right. And so my immediate thought was, all right, well, we can go out, like, next Friday, right? Because it's Friday night and whatever. It's like, yeah. So what's, what, I, I, I'm curious. What's the protocol there? A lot of people say you shouldn't have a first date on Valentine's Day because it implies more seriousness than, nah. I, I'm just whatever. like. Whatever. You're an adult. I, I think it's. I mean, she, she, yeah. You have to put out. Right. As a dude. Okay. Uh, she does not have to. Okay. On Valentine's Day. Those are the rules. That, that's the rules all the time, right? Uh, that's the yeah, u- universal yeah, rule. Yeah. It's, right. It doesn't matter what day it is. It's true. It's a good point. Yeah. Um, But don't, yeah, if you do, I, I think you should go out on Valentine's Day. Okay. If you can get a date on Valentine's Day, you should go out on Valentine's Day. All right. But don't do anything weird. Okay. Don't make it weird. Like go to a, like rob a liquor store or go oh, to no, a that's s- cool. sex that's cool. dungeon or. That's, that, that's cool as well. What, what's weird? What counts as weird? Like bringing her chocolates or f- some flowers or some shit. Don't do that. Okay. Don't, don't do that. That that is weird. Okay, um, Robin Liquor Store. Robin Liquor Store. Keep that on the table. We get a little Bonnie. Keep that Clyde, one in your pocket, right Bonnie, there. Bonnie Clyde action. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, we shall I see. I stole this Jägermeister for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually I like right now. I'm racing. I'm racing my illness. I I'm thought trying. you said you were racist. I'm like, racist. Well, uh, you uh, know there there are some girls with other skin colors who. Uh, might be down for uh, the Jeff. I don't like white women. That's, that's my biggest <laughs> well, problem. I don't like no. Uh, uh, you and Loco Steve. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, I'm I'm racing. It, we're now at like we're recording this on Wednesday, and I I feel like I got a weekend. I got some plans. Maybe going into effect is Valentine's Day on Friday. It's yep. like nobody wants. I can't take this much Dayquil and go to the bar. I will probably end up seeing purple giraffes and shit you know what that happens i don't know dude try it so one of my friends and let me know but see here's the thing if you're going out with some random desperate woman right uh, you find some girl at the bar and she takes your kidneys she's gonna be like oh these are just fucking ruined yeah put it back in because he took a bunch of day quill and put did it back a bunch in. of shots dude I- i've been taking the day quill like severe that's what they call it is day quill severe or really? something like that and there's a warning on the back of this thing that says do not take this more than three times in one day and I'm like, yeah. Why? Well, that's we'll just murder you. You, you can. Like, I've actually been thinking about I mean, taking. Those are all just really suggestions. I want to take the Dayquil Severe. Yep. 
And then I want to take um, the Benadryl. Yes. At the same time. Okay. And then I want to do like four shots of Jägermeister. Mm, yeah. And smoke like a big blunt. That's that's probably bad. That's, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I figure I may get superpowers uh, or I may die. Do you remember uh, jazz punk? I sort of. You're probably going to live that. That sounds awesome. I... <laughs> that sounds okay. pretty cool, man. If you start like tripping out. <laughs> yeah. Again. Put the site first. Yeah. Film it. Film it. Put it up there. <laughs> we'll just go up some random. Here's Jeff going in a renal failure. Like, <laughs> like, like uh, this is the best pickup line in the world. It's like, hey, how's it going? I'm Jeff. Um, listen, I am freaking the fuck out right now. <laughs> uh, here's my phone. Could you film me uh, yeah. for a while? I'll give you $20. You put all your drinks on my tab. I know with those weird lizard hands, Mrs. <laughs> Sleestack, <laughs> that this might be s- difficult for you to operate my phone. <laughs> That's right. If you could just make your head stop changing colors, it's really distracting me right now. And please point me to Bat Country. Point, put your <laughs> hair out. It's on fire right now. I'm not <laughs> cool with that. But other than that, I think that you and I are going to get along. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Valentine's Day is such a, a weird roll of the dice this year. Uh, you know, I, Fuck I don't, it. Roll the dice. I took, the, I took Benadryl for the first time last week. I know this really isn't a oh, super good story. Yeah. Uh, and then I fought. Sleepy, sleepy time. I fought the Benadryl to stay awake. I was Ooh. like drinking coffee and, and Red Bull and stuff yeah. to fight the Benadryl. Benadryl. It ain't messing around. It's not. It's definitely not. But you know what? Let's get moving here because okay. I've only got about 45 minutes before this shit starts to wear off and I just fall asleep <laughs> on the floor. So, yeah. All right. We got news. I've picked out a uh, what I think is a decent variety of the news this week. And the first up is this story that makes me want to punch the entire game industry directly in the <laughs> dick. <laughs> and that is that apparently the Batman Arkham Origins team is prioritizing putting out their DLC over fixing the fucking bugs in Arkham City. I didn't, Arkham I didn't, Origins. Arkham or- I didn't think it was that broken, though. Uh, well, you know what? We ran the story on the website. Yeah. And the reason this is pissing me off more than anything, right? Uh-huh. It's because you remember when we did the review for Arkham Origins? Yes. Remember how I told you about oh, the you had a Riddler problem. Tower that yeah. you can't do? Yeah. That shit's still broken. Really? You cannot get one of the Riddler Towers on the PC on version the PC. Okay. of Arkham Origins. Okay. Yeah, that's shitty. Like, you can't do it. You, It's just... It's gated, like, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, well, we need to put out our bullshit fucking you DLC. know yeah. DLC because you know money." B- yeah, but like, this is one of the you know what? And I think I need to go back and listen to it. But I think that when we did that, I think that I said when we did that review that if like two months from now the shit's still broken, you could take a star off. Yep. If that's the case, even if I didn't mm. say that in the review, go back to the review and take a star off because do it. This is bullshit. Yeah, that's. That's shitty, man. It is. It that is. is. That is a really horrible, greedy business practice. See, like, here's the here's a quote. The team is currently working hard on the upcoming story DLC, and there are currently and, and there are currently are no plans for releasing another patch to address the issues that have been reported on the forums. If we do move forward with creating a new patch, it will try to address the progression blocking bugs for players, not the minor glitches that do not prevent one from continuing to play. Like this is the very definition of when we talk about like wait wait if we if if we do move forward with creating a patch right it will try to address the progression blocking bugs correct for how did you even release this that's the thing is that like we're getting to a point now and I take it back it did crash on me quite a bit uh, like in the la- later, con- latter console p- players of all latter parts of the game told me that it crashes all the time on the consoles. Yeah, there have did. even been bugs I've heard about where you it uh, it corrupts your save game. You got to start the fucking game over. That didn't happen to me. Um, you know like, what I would do if it started my game over? Take the disc out, snap it in half. Yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm just just gonna mark this one P- off. E directly into it. your Xbox. Yes, this is what I think of you. Yep, this is what happens. Um, you get the pitch for treatment. So like this to me. This quote and the fact that this shit is public and they didn't even try to like hide yeah. it or whatever is is to me just a perfect example of Arkham Origins is a it is no love it is just a fucking we want Batman money yep. game uh, now cash I'm not, grab I'm not if th- we that's holy shit I mean seriously I mean the gall the yeah. audacity to say if we move forward if it will try to to address the progression blocking bugs yep not the minor glitches yep. So this is something that I feel like if you – okay, the reason that I brought this up specifically is if you, the listener, 
are a person who has not purchased Arkham Origins and is waiting for it to go down in cost or something like that, I want you, please, 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 to if you ever decide to play the game, go find out if this shit has been fixed yet because you should not be paying money for a fucking broken game. Agreed. I know it's Batman and et, et cetera, but no. Yeah. Ha- have, some, uh, have some integrity and, and stick by that. The only way that we can stop these people is if we just stop buying it. Absolutely. I, actually, I, will, not, I will not be buying any DLC. That's going to be kind of the theme for this episode is if you want to stop this shit, don't quit spending your money on it. Yes. Um, so it pisses me off. Yeah, it's really, really terrible. Well, here's another thing that's pissing off some people. Apparently, the Game Developers Choice Awards is going to honor Anita Sarkeesian uh, what, through a, uh, with a prize. What is it? Uh, well, the, the Ambassador Award. The a Golden prize, Cunt Award. Honoring individuals who help the video games industry advance to a better place through advocacy or action. <sighs> Squeaky wheel gets the grease. All right, all I'm going to say is this. Before yeah. before Anita Sarkeesian came along, I was never even having this conversation. <laughs> so regardless uh, okay, of okay. whether you agree with her, because I, th- I, I think, like, I think that, uh, I've said this before, I think that the things that she says have some merit. I think that personally, as a human being, I don't really like her. Yeah. I don't like the way she states her case. Right. I don't like her focus on stuff. I don't like yeah. the way that she doesn't bring up counterpoints. I don't yep. like the way that she won't debate anybody online. Mm-hmm. I don't like any of that stuff. But what I will say is that at least everybody who's a gamer who's, who's in this shit, the, who are not you know the regular old uh, run-of-the-mill casual people, they know her name. They maybe have seen her videos. And even if you hate her, at least the conversation is being had. And, and as I've said before... I like the conversation simply because I think that some of the stuff that she's pointing out, I don't see it as a feminist, uh, misogynist. I don't see it as any of that stuff. I see it as good storytelling, bad storytelling. Sure. That, yeah. like, the space weasels took my girlfriend is shitty storytelling that we've seen a million times before. Yes. So let's not get rid of it because it's sexist. Let's get rid of it because it's stupid. That's where I'm coming from with this stuff. Yeah. But I don't know. I know that some people are already going to be all up in arms about this shit, and I personally can't blame you if you don't like her because I don't I don't like her. I don't like her. I'm not a fan, but yeah, I don't I don't know. <sighs> it's just like, you know, if you run I, if you're on the internet and you run your mouth enough, somebody eventually sure will pay attention to oh, you. Do, I mean, do you know do you know how irritating it is for for me when I'm rolling around the internet as a person, you know, we made rage select, right? Yes. And I'll go fine five-minute videos that people have made that are just bashing on Anita Sarkeesian. Yes. Like 250,000 hits. Yes. Like, like just attaching yourself to her slipstream of Mm -hmm. either pro or con, like instant success for a YouTuber or whatever. We should challenge her to an online match. She will not. No? no. There's, uh, listen, I I don't know. In anything. I don't know if we've ever actually covered this before, but preferably Custer's Revenge. <clears throat> but there is a there is a pretty sizable amount of evidence that she doesn't even play video games. <laughs> she hasn't. She's played some, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But that, like most of the games she's talking about on her show, where she's pulling out, like you know, uh, the, she's like Fox News. Yeah, well, the, okay. Uh, and once again, a lot of cold medicine. It's been a while since I looked into this, but like one of the things that a lot of people brought up was that. Apparently, she was pulling a lot of the footage that she was using on her show from Let's Players. Oh, yeah. And not, like, crediting them at all. Yeah. Um, well, whatever. I mean, you know, I guess the thing is that if I wanted... She, she could pull our footage, but she's got to use the audio as well. <laughs> you have my permission, <laughs> Anita. Yeah, as long as you use the audio. You have to use the audio as well. Um, I just... Uh, which is it, Which is shitty. I mean, you know, if she got all that money to buy video games, video games are not expensive, especially if she's looking at older ones. You can get those for a fucking song these yeah. days. Like, go do your own capture work. Why are you ripping off other people's YouTube channels? Just go do your own capture work. I think we should send her a T-shirt uh-huh. featuring the Rape Yeti. <laughs> oh, God. No. Nope. Just as an no. olive branch. No. No? Because you know what would happen? What would happen? She would trot that shit out at a fucking TEDx talk. Great. And it would make us look like scumbags. So? But we're not scumbags. Here's the thing, Jeff. I don't know where you've been, but we already look like scumbags. Do we? <laughs> yeah. I'd like to think that we have some integrity. Yeah. <laughs> we have integrity, right? That's, that's cute. Uh, <laughs> no, let's see. Yeah. They, dude, if they bring out a Rage Select t-shirt on a TEDx talk, uh-huh. 
shit, man. Traffic. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Someone sent me a rape yeti I just, t-shirt. I just want to see two barbed penises. I want to see 4chan really go after her. That's yeah, what I want to see. Because they yeah. did they did, but it was kind of tepid. Like it was just like, oh, mm, oh people yeah. are saying bad stuff about me online. I'm like, mm. You know, yeah, really? In, in the words welcome of John, the internet. Ma- John McClain, welcome to the party, pal. You know, <laughs> like, uh, so anyway, you know what? There's some people already. Somebody even sent this in as an email asking us to talk about it. I think that, I, to be honest, um, do you even know anybody who's won a single Game Developer's Choice Award ever in the past, ever at all? I don't pay attention to do those. Do you know what that even is? Ever. They, they, actually, you know what? They wanted to give me one uh-huh. one year. And I was like, I don't know what that is, so whatever. Fuck no. off. Yeah. And so I was I had to I had to decline. I mean that's the thing, is that I had you to know, record. I was like, I can't I can't show up. Yeah. So it's Tuesday. I, it's Tuesday. Uh I have Dark to, is out. I have to go I, record. I have to go play this <laughs> shitty vampire game <laughs> and talk about our dicks. So yeah, I don't I mean that's the other part of this is that people get her, they're like, Oh, they're giving her an award. Who who is giving her an award? And who fucking <laughs> yeah. like name me anybody who's ever won a game developer's choice award. <laughs> I yeah. think that uh, Bioware yeah. might have for Mass Effect effect at one point okay but i don't who cares awards are meaningless it's just a it's a golden anonymous person as long as they're not giving her money yeah well in happier news we had both a trailer and a a little dev diary thing that came up for evolve that looks pretty sweet as a left for dead fanatic jason how do you feel about evolve i'm i'm not a fanatic i do love it but there are a lot of people out there who are better than me and know more about it but i do every time i play it i just have a blast okay uh i don't know if fanatic's the appropriate word but evolve looks awesome yeah it It looks like a hell of a lot of fun yeah uh you guys should watch the uh the video basically it's uh it's basically it's uh it's cooperative and competitive uh online four four v one four four v one yeah and it's uh the uh the one in this is essentially the tank and the other people are the the uh, they're they're hunting uh, this this tank, this mm-hmm. giant monster, and the monster keeps getting more and more powerful. And each of the players has different abilities. Yep. Uh, there's a medic and uh, you know an assault class, etc. Uh, so this sounds like a lot of fun. My only disappointment with this, mm. it's a minor one. No local co-op. No local co-op. No. Okay. Yeah. That so that's a little disappointing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It looks pretty. Yeah. I wish it were a Predator video game. Ooh. Instead, but the, you know, whatever. Mod <laughs> community, a mod community. Hello, mod community. Get on it. But yeah, it looks good. It looks exciting. What if they could yeah. make it a predator? But it had to be like in the videos. This, this monster is like fourteen feet tall. What if it had to be like a fourteen foot tall predator? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. They <laughs> um, actually said in, in what we watched a video before we started here with an interview where I actually said I, I think he w- the guy was implying that there's going to be more than just that one type of monster. Yeah, they said that they were going to introduce some more monsters, but he. Yeah, yeah, he was vague about that, but yeah, yeah. check it out. It's on uh, Joystick. Yeah, uh, you can you can find it pretty much everywhere. But now I will say that the the uh, have you watched the actual the cinematic trailer? Uh, no. Okay, have not. Uh, the cinematic trailer does one of these things. It's uh it's a minor pet peeve of mine because <laughs> you're sick of it. You told me about that. Yeah, where the they the, for the music in the trailer they use "Mother" by Danzig, saying like kind of acapella, real slow. I gotta by hear this that. lady. See, I like those versions. Yeah, those, like stripped down mm. acoustic versions. Like, there's this one video uh, for like this beer or something. Okay. And it's like in this French like coffee house or something like that. Okay. And you hear this slow music playing, uh-huh. and then the camera pans over, and it's Motorhead doing this stripped down slow acoustic version of <laughs> Ace of Spades. I love that. It just it always reminds me of Richard Cheese, and that that got which I also love. I used to work with a guy that used to play Richard Cheese nonstop, twenty four hours a day, and I was just like, dude, can we please listen to something else? And he'd be like, no, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, Are you even listening to the same? fucking cd for four days now i'm going to kill you um i don't know i think it's all right i think that this trailer would i actually have a mind to get this trailer and then put the actual danzig version of mother (laughs) over it instead of the slow down See how it works yeah i mean ever since that fucking mad world trailer for gears of war that's been like like everybody's cribbing from that yep all right well Next up in uh, news, uh, I probably should put this behind the Anita Sarkeesian news that you may not care about. Oh, Jason, Flappy Bird is gone. Oh, Flappy Bird is gone, Jason. Oh, we uh, last we hardly knew ye. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Flappy Bird, man. <laughs> Jeff said, "Try this. Try it." He yes. hands me this phone. Yeah, I played it for like. 
two seconds. I'm like, okay, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> handed it back. Like, yeah. That's the, the weird. Okay, so the weir- there's a weird thing about this story is that when is that uh, it's not entirely clear why the guy took it off the market because apparently it was making like 50k a day a day in ads a day so um why do you hate money at first it was assumed uh, there was a lot of assumption out there that the reason that he did it was because um the uh shitty people online as we well know yes. it occurs uh, were d- there's a large group of people that were just badgering the shit out of this guy about how similar like the pipes were to Mario yeah. and the bird design and the way the so, whole thing looked. Whatever. <laughs> um, and that this was like a Phil Fish style, like, you know, fuck it, just fucking take it down, I don't care. But then uh, there was another interview that I read with him where it said that the reason he took it down was because people were too obsessed with the game. Yeah. <laughs> That he he like people are too obsessed with giving you money. Why he had the usage statistics, and he was like, "I meant for this to be played like in a couple of minute increments, and that you've got these things where people are just like playing, yeah. playing, and playing it, and that wasn't how I meant for the game to be played." That doesn't seem real to me. This could be a cultural thing. Whereas an American, I've been trained, money, get your fucking money, get, yeah, get your stacks, your fat exactly. stacks, and stuff. But um, he's, he's Vietnamese, yeah. But I don't. That doesn't seem, dude. It doesn't seem cool. He, he probably has enough money in like three days to like buy Vietnam. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe the may, you know that's another question is like, is the is the government coming after him? Is they they see I don't know what the Vietnamese government is. They've seen this guy making fifty fifty thousand dollars a day it's like a lot. for a month. It's a lot of money. That's gonna mess you up. You're gonna have a lot of people taking a really close interest in you <laughs> really really quickly. <laughs> that's true. <clears throat> uh, especially if you made this shit. I mean, you know, Flappy Bird. One person could make that game. It's, yeah. It's nothing. So you made $50,000 a day for a month. Uh, well, no. I think it was out long before that. I think it's been out for a while. I wonder what his... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, but the guy I, also I has... I don't a, understand. Yeah. It's like, hey, you know what? Yeah. I'll give you 10 bucks and I'll take it off your hands. <laughs> I'll buy it from you. Uh, well, I will buy it from you. Now, of course, there are tons of clones out oh, there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, none of them apparently as good as... Or as they all try to add something else. Yeah, to differentiate themselves, and I don't know, kind of sucks. But, but uh, what I like to say is, who the fuck cares? <laughs> I know it was people are addicted. That's their problem. I could play Final Fantasy VI in full like three D on my phone. Why the fuck am I playing Flappy Bird? Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant why did he care? If people were addicted. I, one of my friends on Facebook posted a picture where they got up to like a hundred and thirteen. On Flappy Bird. Okay. And I was like... I guess, is that good? I don't know. Yeah. I, it's, it's, you know, one hit and you're dead. So basically, you've got to do... Yeah. you got to yeah. keep going without making a mistake. Sure. For a bunch of, and I was just like, why are you doing this? Yeah. There's so many... Like, we live in a fucking golden age yeah. of video games. Yes. Why are you playing... <laughs> exactly. I mean, Bejeweled is more... Yeah. Is better than Flappy Bird. Like, fuck, man. Um... Also, you know what? There's a couple other phone things I didn't pull up that we can talk about real, 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 real briefly. Uh, first off, have you seen? Um, there's a, a news story that came out last week. Apparently, EA has a new Dungeon Keeper mobile game on. Oh it. yeah, have you heard about this? Yes, I have. About I the saw sh- it the other day. I almost downloaded it. Oh no, I didn't do it. Oh no, did you? But do you know about the problems? What are the problems? Well, like to dig a tunnel. Mm-hmm. The further you dig, the more real time time it takes to dig a tunnel. And apparently the thing is just, like, lousy with microtransactions. Like, it'll take you, like, 17 hours to build, like, one tunnel where you just can't play the game. Or you can buy the shit to speed up your shit for real money. <laughs> you assholes. There was actually a oh, story. Yeah, I, I saw that Molyneux was, like, pissed. Molyneux came out and yeah. was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. You're like, when Peter Molyneux comes out and calls your shit ridiculous, <laughs> yeah, that's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Um, the other thing to just maybe briefly touch on is uh, I've gone. You remember when we, uh, the whole Banner Saga Candy Crush thing happened, and we were yes. kind of taking it easy on King or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they came back and revealed themselves to be complete shit heels. Yep, fuck you guys. You're fucking dead to me. Uh, die the lot of you. 
Um, there was a, what was it called? Candy, Candy Swipe. Candy Swipe, yeah, that came out two years before Candy Crush. Yes. Incredible similarities between it. It, was, it seems pretty clear that they ripped it off. The, it just, see, it's just from, I just from what played, I saw. I haven't played either one of them, so I can't say for sure. Yeah. But from what I've seen, it looks like the iconography is the same. It looks like it's a, a, a variations on a match three thing. Candy Swipe is a little bit different than Candy Crush. Uh, but that... But part of the thing, and I, I, you guys, if you have uh, more information on this, please post in the comments because I was reading something. But it seems like, so the creator of Candy Swipe, when Candy Crush went to register their trademark, like, did the Phoenix right? It was like, yeah, speak now or forever hold your peace. And he's like, objection, you know, yeah. like this is like I can show you the feedback on my page where people are like, downloaded my game and said, this is a Candy Crush saga, one star. Like you have have actually created copyright ambiguity yeah. through your shit, um, and that, then apparently there was another part of that story. I kind of really wish I had it up in front of me right now. That was that it seems like Candy Crush that King has purchased another game with the word candy in it that came out before Candy Swipe in order to try to retroactively steal the mobile candy game <laughs> trademark monsters i know like just fucking this is one of those pro this is what i mean you know i don't like get too far up in my soapbox about murica and shit but like some judge should just be like S no and stop yeah. it i'm dismissing and, this case because you're dickheads and if you come back at me with this shit then you're gonna have to pay this guy and i'm not even gonna require him to show up in court yeah i was gonna be like you, every time you come to me with one of these bullshit things you pay this guy 50k uh the other thing is i don't know how true it was but there's a whole thing about the guy that he's wrote an open letter that's like i made this as a tribute to my dead mother right yeah, yeah. and now it's like king is trying to get the rights to essentially be able to muscle him out of that space yeah uh, so fuck those guys. Yep. You win the Golden Asshole of the Week Award. Yes. The Golden Rectum Award. So, yeah, shit in, in phones, not so great right now. The phone, phone, all the phone shit is yeah. just all messed up. Again, there's better stuff for you to play. You can get Baldur's Gate on your iPad. Get a 2DS and do, buy, do that. buy Fire Emblem or yes. Bravely Default or something. Yeah. You know? Don't waste your time with this candy cock. Or, or, or you know, there are so many games on your phone that have a long track record of being good games that you can just play. Just go get some of those. Yeah. Just fucking go get some of those. Um, all right. And then finally, we've got a story which nobody has asked for, and it's a smaller story. But I read it, and I, I have to start screaming, no, 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 no. Okay, let's hear it. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, Dark Souls 2. Uh, there's a story that came out today that said that if you pre-order Dark Souls 2, um, that there's going to be, you're going to get early access when the game starts to weapons uh, that are better than the starting weapons that you would normally get. Kind of defeats the purpose of Dark These Souls, right? These are weapons that are available later on in the game, so yeah. it's not like you're getting anything additional. You're best getting access to this stuff at the beginning of the game rather than having to find it later on in the game. And you have a problem with That's this. dick. <laughs> that's cockery. Literal, that's literal cockery. Uh, that's Betty Cocker, man. That the, the thing is that part of Demon Souls and Dark Souls is there's an advantage to starting out with certain classes in that game because they start with better armor, better weapons, or whatever. Like If you start with the Pyromancer in the game, it's a more flexible character, but they start with a really shitty shield and a really shitty main weapon. Or an okay main weapon. Like, <sighs> mm. <laughs> mm. uh-oh, like, there's, there's this thing. All right. Puts his fist to his, his forehead. Uh, if, if, this, if this had been a cosmetic thing. Yes. Or, like, um, maybe some healing items or something like that, um, maybe. But the simple fact of, of taking, I guess, okay, I guess that what it comes down to for me is this. The the progression through Dark Souls of finding things in certain places and finding certain armors and weapons here and here and here and here and here seemed like it was set up in a very specific way. And just to take some of that stuff and rip it out of the game and just give it to you as a reward for pre-ordering the game, first off, it's not a bonus because those weapons are still in the game. It's just going to make the first hour a little bit easier than maybe right. it would be otherwise. Right. And second of all, like... <sighs> If the if the development of Dark Souls two 
is so loose that that they that where these weapons are in the game doesn't have some import or matter, then I once again I'm worried that they're not taking this shit as seriously <laughs> as I feel like they should okay. be. Let me let me I, I want if you can give me a second, Jeff. I want to talk to our listeners, to our our ragers. All right, I'll give you over here. Uh, uh, I just the want to say back in my forehead, guys. Uh, in about a month, we are going to need to mobilize and be there. For Jeff, maybe be ready with consoling emails, uh, maybe some cards, maybe bring over food like somebody died or something. Because <laughs> casseroles, in, in, some casseroles. <laughs> in the event that Dark Souls Two sucks, this is not the fallout that I will be able to handle myself. I will need you guys. No, no, Jason, no, 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 no. no. I'm I'm a 35 year old man. Uh, I've done this before. I don't have any expectation for Dark Souls 2. Okay. I'm expecting Dark Souls 2 to disappoint me. Okay. So this is that game where if you have low expectations and the game is great, I will be wonderfully surprised. God, I hope some of these dates pay off. Some of these (laughs) some of these ladies, some of this works out for you between now and then. But just I'm I know you're saying that. I I know, I know. But but you know what? The thing is that Okay, like I don't, don't want to come over here and you've like gone super no. scion on me. Or no, no, whatever. no, 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 it ain't gonna happen. And I'll tell you why. I'm gonna show you this right now. I just pulled up the GameFly coming soon page, right? Yeah, yeah. So, in literally like almost a month from today, mm-hmm. uh, ba, 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 Dark Souls 2. Yes. Dark Souls 2's release date, 311. Yep. Okay. I have one week. Why? Because 318 <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes comes out. Yeah. So I have yep. seven days to beat Dark Souls 2. And if I don't, then I'm done. What because about, what about Titanfall though? If, dude, are you kidding me? That's that's all you, baby. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um I, I suffered for it at E3. I better get to play it. There you go. Uh, but yeah, but you, I, got, you yeah, got Metal Gear. I have seven days, mm-hmm. and I love me some Dark Souls. Yep. I like Metal Gear more than Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. it's uh, <laughs> Dark Souls is going to break your heart, and then Metal Gear is going to show up a week later and say, It's okay, cut, baby. Bring, bring it in, baby. <laughs> well, bring bring I mean, it like, in here. Let, let, me, let me give you some, some solid snake. Let me, let me let's see. I want to I I put this in perspective okay, for you. It's okay, Jeff. Daddy's home. I want to put this in perspective for you. The last Metal Gear game to come out, was Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Okay. April 28th of 2010. Holy it's crap, really? Four, well, Revengeance came out last year. Uh, that we know how that doesn't count. Yeah. So, but the last Hideo Kojima Metal Gear game was a PSP game that came out 4 years ago. And before that, uh, let's just see if I can remember the last like on a main console like Metal Gear Solid 4 2008. Oof. 6 years ago. Yes. So I'm ready. <laughs> after Metal Gear Solid 4, I was ready to just be done. Mm-hmm. And then Peace Walker came out. And yeah. after that, I was ready to be done. Yeah. Then they stoked the fires. This is the first console like Metal Gear release in six fucking years. <laughs> Dark Souls Dark Souls 1 can go to hell for Metal Gear. I will play Metal Gear before I play Dark Souls 1. Whoa. Yes. Dude. I know. This is serious. I know. You've never been around when I I've haven't. been in the grip of metal metal mania. No, nope, I don't. I don't want to see it. <laughs> I don't. Do not want. Okay. All right. Well, um, you know, somebody asked us on the Super Awesome Video Game Show. Yep. Uh, they said they have a hard time playing Metal Gear Solid Four. Could you make a tutorial? And I was like, Yeah, <laughs> I can make you a tutorial about Metal Gear Solid Four. <laughs> Jeff will actually call you just to talk about it. You know, I rarely respond a lot of times when people will message me on Facebook and Twitter, but whenever anybody sends me a message or on the website, whenever anybody in the website is like, "This has been for Dark Souls recently," somebody will be like, "Hey, I'm stuck in this place. Can you help me?" And like, I normally won't respond to people because I tend to get, I tend to spend wait uh, like an hour writing a response. Yeah. But then I'll write like six paragraphs back to them on Facebook. <laughs> like, Try this. Check this wiki. And if that doesn't work, do this. And if that doesn't work, do this. And then if that doesn't work, then uh, let message me back and I'll tell you what to do then. <laughs> um, so yeah, but Dark Souls 2, the pre-order thing, I'm still worried, man. I'm real worried. Some people, I mean, we, we ran this one Dark Souls 2 story where there's some people that really like some of the hard aspects of Dark Souls, some of the difficulty aspects of Dark Souls yeah. that are excited about the way that they're amping those up in Dark Souls 2. 
I'm worried that it's going to create a game that's more frustrating than fun to play. Okay. Um, because it's going to be intentionally difficult yeah. to the point where... Um, You've said this before. It never gets easier. Yeah, I have said it before. All right, so that is all of the news that we've got. We've got a bunch of emails from you guys. I said we're probably going to have a slightly shorter show this week because I can already feel the severity of the day quill wearing off. <coughs> but um, before we, we're going to take a quick break. Before we do, uh, the email address, if you want to send in your mail, is mail at ragelect.com. It's mail at ragelect.com. Uh, keep in mind that we will answer questions that are not simply video game related if they are entertaining. So we are going to go take a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to answer your questions. And we're back. Um, you know, Jason, I've, I've been sick here recently, right? And I've, we're outside. I've been hearing for the last two days like just the pounding of blood in my head. And I'm wondering, is that... Am I... Am I Getting superpowers? Um, is, it, is it like scanners? Is it like a really slow scanners thing? Or I'm going to go with no. Okay. Do you ever hear just the blood pounding through your head? And just <laughs> like Doctor uh, Who I, and shit? I have voices telling me to burn things. Oh, so that kind of drowns it out. Do, yeah. they, do they rap along to the sound of the... That would be cool, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a beat. It's, the yeah. pounding blood is the backbeat. Exactly. All right. Well, I tell you what. Let's Enough about my brain. Let's get to some emails. Uh, our first email comes in from that Siberian guy. And that Siberian guy says, Greetings, gentlemen. Uh, most of us know that Metacritic review criteria. Okay, most of us know that Metacritic's review criteria is somewhat dodgy. Bigger AAA companies and massive publishers can easily buy their way into the top best rated game list and ensure themselves a guaranteed sales through Metacritic. There was some there was some occasions where Metacritic's early review scores of an indie or smaller games in beta would change entire game development cycle by criticizing by criticism. Okay, uh, there were. No, by criticizing by specific cri game features. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> by criticizing specific game features and even forcing, by giving a low rating, game development companies to remove some key features from a game, changing the game entirely. Um, my question is as follows. Should game review and critic sites like Metacritic have an enormous influence on game development and industry? Because uh, at this point, this power is easily abused by bigger companies that can shape smaller independent games, game creation, to their own desires. Thank you for your time, mm. that Siberian guy. Well, it's a two-part question. Uh, I wonder how how much... Uh, well, I mean, we know that publishers do try to influence and buy off uh, developers. It's happened before at, at very reputable spots, but I don't know how widespread it is. And I, I wonder, I, I wonder, just in the larger scheme of things, how important the Metacritic scores are are to consumers. Well, okay, I'm not sure how... Well, to, oh, to consumers. Oh, to okay. consumers. Um, hmm, that's a good question. I mean, I do know that a while back we've seen... I, I, I check them. Do you? Or I used to. Yeah. See, I, I guess the thing is that I've remained fairly oblivious because when, like, when we're going to play a game or review it... We're just going to do it well, no, no matter what. I, I try to avoid Metacritic scores because yeah. I don't want to be influenced by sure. other people's opinions. Yeah. I do know, though, that I mean, a while back you know, we've, we've all heard... That there would be like bonuses and stuff for games that were based specifically on oh, what bonuses their, for the developers. Yeah, for the developers yeah. on what the Metacritic score equal. Yeah. I think that's bullshit. I think yeah. that, that should be based on sales numbers, right. not Metacritic score. Yeah, like if your game got a thirty on Metacritic yeah. but sold as good as GTA Five, you guys should get raises and bonuses and shit like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, and you know, your Metacritic is in the hands of you know the the. There aren't a lot of good game critics out there. You know, well, I mean, there are a bunch of there are a bunch of people who review games and they're just dumbasses. OK, like us. You know, I mean, we're not on Metacritic, but right. you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't listen to me. You wouldn't listen to you? No, no, no. Really? No. Oh, OK. I mean, I guess for me um, anymore, we had a question last week that was talking about like Let's Plays and stuff changing. I think that the formal review is becoming less and less important as time goes on. Sure. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You're seeing more, like, you would do better, instead of instead of a review, you would probably do better to look at Let's Plays, to look at, I mean, because most of us that are experienced gamers, you can look at gameplay footage of a game. Yeah. Not the stuff that's been altered together into a trailer by a company, but, like, just the stuff of somebody raw playing it. And you could probably tell if you're going to yeah. like it or not. Right. I mean, for those of us that have the experience, or, you know, I, I would even say that it doesn't take... 
you know, the amount of game playing that you and I have done to look at some video and go, well, I can tell that's a Diablo style game, yes. right? Or that's a right. Gears shooter or mm-hmm. it's Call of Duty or whatever. Um, I don't think that reviews should influence development. Right. Uh, well, what about on the smaller stuff? I don't believe so. I think I, I've talked about this multiple times before, but I don't think that, um, in fact, I think you and I were having this conversation at the bar last week. I think that if you tried to design anything, book, movie, TV yeah. series, video game by committee, and you incorporate everything, like if somebody has a comment, like say on a trailer for a movie about something they'd like to see in that movie, and it's a good idea, that makes sense. But you should not bend the vision of the person who's the of the creator to the will of people who have not even played the final sure. product yet. Yeah, yeah, agreed. That's, that, I think that's bullshit. Agreed. Uh, and that's putting hands in publishers, because then publishers can start saying, uh, you know, somebody mentioned that you need a, a plucky talking raccoon for your sidekick. Right. Uh, so that's got to be in this game. Or, or it's, well, this game, this game had that. Right. Uh, and so I think your game needs that as well. That's what they do in movies all the time. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, you know what? It comes down, down to, a, um, it comes down to a, a larger topic that we've actually wrestled with quite a bit here, and that is, like, when a lot of times, and I, I'm, I'm trying to choose my words real carefully here because I don't want to just come off as condescending, but I'm sure that you'll be able to I- identify with this. A lot of times when you're dealing with the creative stuff, right, uh, be it writing or what you know, whatever. People ask for stuff, but they don't really know what they want. Right? They think they know what they want. Sure. But yeah. a lot of times, we've seen numerous yeah. occasions where when you give the people exactly what they ask for, then they yep. go, Pff, uh, "This is just yeah." Well, dude. that's that goes back to me and why I really can't. Um, I really can't make my own sandwich at Subway. Right. I have to order something off the menu. Uh-huh. You can tell them a little bit of this, put some of that on there. Right. And I end up, I, it's terrible. I end up like, yeah, I'm going to put you know, uh, this book of matches on there and, and some mayonnaise. What are you doing? And, you know, it, it's matches sandwiches are not good. They burn. Right. They burn. Right. But I'm like, oh, that, that could be cool. Right. Yeah. You know, I, it's, I don't I don't know what I'm doing. You know, and, and some people think that uh, just because they play a lot of games, they know what makes them good and they don't. You know, and and a lot of times, I, you know, I don't really have that level of introspection about a lot of things either. Yeah. A lot of times, I'll you know he, he see a movie or something like that, and I'm just like, yeah, it's good. I think, and that's that's the the extent of my review. Oh, it was cool. Right, right. I mean, I think that you have to spend a long time looking at stuff in fi- in in minute detail. I mean, like I I feel like I guess there's a difference between um between when you see like uh, uh, put it in perspective like going to a, an art gallery, right? There's a difference between looking at a painting and going, oh, that's pretty, yeah. and having like the knowledge and the experience yeah. and stuff to look at something and really be able to appreciate like what was going on here, and I can see these strokes over here and this over here. The same, I feel, is very true of games as well, is that sometimes um, there have been small things in games that, are, that stand out to me just because I, I spend a lot of time thinking about video games. Like, yeah. Even when I'm not just playing them, but when I'm just sitting around and going like, well, what was it that made this game better than this duplicate game? Like, what right. is it that made Portal better than Quantum Conundrum, like we were talking about last right. week? Where on paper, they look exactly the same, and one of them is a classic, and the other one is okay, but it's not anything yeah. to write home about. Um, so a lot of times I feel like everybody, I mean, and, and, and part of this is the internet, everybody's got a voice, you know, Twitter and Facebook and all this stuff. Everybody's got a way to put, to slather their opinion out there, regardless of how informed or uninformed it is. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that I think that in a lot of cases that people that's the problem with Metacritic is you shouldn't be listening to all of those people, right? You know, yeah. So that's that's my two cents on the thing. I think Metacritic has too much power. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, I think that it should probably be against the law to, or I don't know, if against the law, but it should at least be kind of considered an unethical business practice to base somebody's salary on the opinions. <laughs> right. Uh, because a lot of times, I mean, you know, you've read, it, when you've been around long enough and you read enough of this stuff, and especially when you read, like, the postmortems for stuff, you've come to find out that a lot of times, like, you know, this person put out a shitty game, but they didn't want to put out a shitty right. game. They knew it was a shitty game, yeah. but they had a deadline. Mm-hmm. They had a producer or a, a higher yeah. up that said, you got to put all this DLC bullshit in here. Or you I recommend you guys go out and find those some of those postmortems yeah. uh, that talk about you know 
everything that went wrong yeah. and why it went wrong. I mean, there's a, and a lot of times I'm guilty of it too, but a lot of times, you know, before you get into this, you think of you, w- when a game has problems, you think of it like the developers were these nefarious villains, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, Mwaha, we, I don't have time. I'm going to go drink beers this weekend. I am not going to fix these bugs. I don't know why they're French. Yeah, but, well, uh, it's. Uh, he was actually twirling a, a, a mustache. It was mustache. funny. Uh, this is not a video podcast, but he was doing it anyway. Well, you got to get into the character. You got to really <laughs> lean into the role. Embody it. So, yeah, I don't think that Metacritic should have that sort of power over people. I think the direct sales numbers should. Uh, but then the whole thing is kind of messed up, too. You know, yeah. You see sales projections that... Business versus art. <laughs> yeah. And art's losing right now. Yes. Art's pretty <laughs> much losing right now. All right, our next question is very short. This one comes in from Deacon Frost. Deacon Frost says, Hello, gracious hosts of Rage Select. I have the ultimate question for you. Pulp or no pulp Jeez. in your orange juice? I don't Thanks for care. My bear. You don't care? No, I really don't care. What? Uh, it's one of those things. It's like, uh, you know, somebody was railing the other day about... Uh, this is as bad as people who have the toilet paper feeding under the, the roll instead of over. I'm like, well, that, who, who cares, cares about that? Yeah, that doesn't matter. Some people get crazy about that. Pulp, no pulp, I don't care. I just like orange juice. Okay. So, yeah. but, but you don't mind having to chew? There's like a lot of pulp in there? No, whatever. No? no? Uh, personally, I go for pulp, uh, but that's just me. Yep. I, I, I go either way. I mean, I I'm like not going to turn, turn away no pulp. Yeah, what I like you, orange juice. Do you have, do you have any non-approved breakfast drinks? Non-approved apple uh, juice. Uh, no, I like apple juice. Grape, it's good. Grape juice. Grape it's apple. Just, grape grape it's apple. Good. Yeah. Cran. It's good. No, can't do cr- cran. Crans. You can't really do that for breakfast. This, this is a lot. I drink a lot of orange juice when I drink it. Uh-huh. That's that's why I like. What, I hate it when you go to a restaurant. I'm like, yeah, can I get a glass of orange? Oh, juice? they give you that. Tea. Go, it's like, what is? This? I didn't ask like a, for a fucking Nyquil cup of orange yeah, juice. Yeah, Dixie cup full of. Yeah, it's like bring like, me the whole craft. They're like, mm. okay, well that's eighteen dollars. Right. I'm like, well, fuck like, you. Why is it eighteen dollars? <laughs> yeah. Oranges aren't an endangered species. <laughs> I know. I could go to the grocery store and buy like yeah. a, a, a jug of orange juice for yeah. like a dollar. You know what I usually drink at breakfast? What's that? Diet Coke. Ew, for <laughs> breakfast? Yeah, man. Sugar? Uh, I don't know. I, I was, go to I go to gyms. I go to yeah. gyms a lot now in the morning. Yeah, not I don't know. That's not so when weird. all the the vampires and the sex chuds are out there. When right. you go, yeah. Um, Dude, that's I go the time the, to go. I go in the mornings, <laughs> breakfast, and I get well diet Pepsi. Uh, you know, yeah, diet Pepsi and uh, Panhandlers breakfast. See, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like the, I don't care for sugary drinks. Okay, so I just I don't ever drink soda unless yeah. I, I don't know. I get my coffee unsweetened because I like bitter drinks. Yeah. This question's stupid. Let's go to the next one. Anyway, <laughs> I one more question before we go, or one more breakfast drink, yay or nay? What? Tomato. No. No tomato? No. Oh, tomato's so good. No, I can't do that. V8? No. Spicy V8? No, no. Okay, all right. Low sodium? I don't like tomato-based drinks. Like tomatoes? I like tomatoes. It's all not right. tomato, but not in liquid form. Okay. All right, our next one comes in from Will. Will says, Jason, Jeff, my friend and I are having these huge debates on is The Hobbit a good movie franchise? I am on the side that it is a good movies, but not as good as Lord of the Rings, uh, whereas my friend is on the side that it should not be made and it is garbage. So what I ask is where do you guys stand as of now on The Hobbit movies? Stay classy, Rage Select. Will. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I would say that uh, saying that it should not be made and it's garbage, that's hyperbole. That's that's purest queenie bullshit. Uh, I think they're good. They're not great, yeah, but they're fun. They're cool. They're not even remotely as good as uh, the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, but yeah, they're fun. They're, I was like, okay, yeah, I like that. It's not anything I'm like, oh my god, I, I can't evangelize them to anyone. Right. Uh, but there, yeah, there's some fun stuff in there. There's some bad stuff in there. There's yeah, they're okay. They're decent movies. I think you got two major problems with The Hobbit. Yeah, okay. Uh the first is that the Hobbit as a trilogy or the the okay. The first problem is that the Lord of the Rings books, that the story of the Lord of the Rings, this is like the ultimate final like earth-shattering event in Middle Earth history. Yes. This is the biggest fucking thing that's happened in thousands of years. Yes. All the shit that they're adding into the Hobbit it seems like they're trying to make the Hobbit as big of an event as the events in Lord of the Rings. You got all the yeah. necromancer stuff and all the stuff they've added in from like the Cimmerillion, um, and I think that the Hobbit, I- I- in its core form, is a prequel to the Lord of the Rings. It's not as big of a story. It's a smaller story about a dude. It's about 
Bilbo Baggins. It's not about fucking Thorn Oak and Shield or Gandalf for the Necromancer right. or any of that stuff. Yeah. It's about Bilbo's journey and and what he does. Yep. And I think that uh, by expanding that, that they've lost that focus, which is the mm-hmm. focus of Bilbo Baggins' yeah. Hobbit. Having a small story is okay. Yes. Um, I also feel that the that um, the you know the Lord of the Rings they kind of just shot the books right, and like mm. I mean you know they made some changes yeah but for the most part they shot the books, uh, you know one two three, um, I feel like I like Peter Jackson and I like a lot of his movies um, especially the older ones the fucking weird old, weird older ones, okay agree to disagree um, I think that adding in that Cimmerillion stuff into The Hobbit yeah. has diluted that story and mm. made it very all over the place. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel very focused. It feels very weird. And, mm-hmm. like, there's like there's like six or seven different stories going on in there. Yeah. And in Lord of the Rings, there was basically two. It's like they were trying to... They were padding it. They were trying to make it an epic. Yeah. And, and it was an epic, but in its own smaller way. They were trying to compete with Lord of the Rings. Yes. And you shouldn't do that. And I mean I just watched the the latest one a little while back and I mean you know they had it on this like love story yeah. thing and and then they and then they just had to shove Legolas in, in that second movie. <laughs> yeah. It's like you guys like Orlando Bloom. He's not working. Get him in here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like what why? Why would you need let you don't so what I can't wait for is I can't wait for all three of those movies to come out and for somebody to pull a chop it up edit and make me a fucking ninety minute long Hobbit movie. Hobbit movie. It's gonna happen. I know, and I cannot wait for it because, you know that I I like that story. I actually went back and and read it right before the beginning, and I think that they're just bogging it down with too much other bullshit. Yep, agreed. So still, I think the movies are fun. They're just they they could and should be better. I, I'll tell you where I where I fall on it was when the Lord of the Rings movies were coming out. Um, I could not wait to go to the theater when those movies came out and watch it in the theater yeah. a couple of times oh, sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I uh, saw the first Hobbit movie in the theater as a lark and was like, eh. Yeah. And the second one, I haven't even bothered. So I, it's it's kind of just, I don't know. Wait, you didn't see the second movie yet? No, no, no. I didn't bother to go see it in the theater. Oh, in the theater. I, I was like, gotcha. I just waited until okay. I could see it. Gotcha. So. Um, I, and I'm not excited for the third one. It's not like I'm yeah. like, ooh, I can't wait for next Christmas. For I know. I'm just like, all right. Concluded, yeah. blah, Whatever. blah, blah, blah. Um, all right, our next question comes in from Leonardo. Leonardo says, hello, Rage Select crew. I recently purchased a high-end PC and took a week off to play games. Unfortunately, my girlfriend did not agree with how I spent my vacation, and we had a fight in which she called gaming a, quote, waste of time, unquote. I explained to her gaming has had a big impact in my life. Uh, games like Total War and Dynasty Warriors got me interested in history and reading. Oh. Fallout 3 introduced me to big band and jazz music. Yeah, yeah. ink spots. And playing uh, MMOs has improved my multitasking skills, okay. which comes in handy since I work at I- work in IT. Cool. So I ask yeah. you guys, do you consider gaming an integral part of who you are or more of a hobby? Has it provided you with patience or focus? Has it allowed you to think outside the box or try things outside your comfort level? Or is it simply a mindless waste of time? Thanks for answering my question. Keep up the good work. Leonardo from Houston. You want to go first? I think it's pretty obvious for me, right? Yeah. I started a fucking website. I'd work 60 hours a <laughs> Look week. Look at Jeff. A video of game. course it's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> of course it's a bullshit waste of time. No. Uh, I, I think that um, when I was younger, um, it was... Uh, gaming has always been a core part of my life. And I think that it's interesting because uh, since I grew up with games... Um, I feel that uh, I put games, I put video games, and this may be a little bit controversial, but I put video games above most other artistic forms when it comes to my level of enjoyment with them. Uh, and, and I'm specifically talking about like books and movies and TV shows and stuff like that. Like I like a good book. I'm not saying books are bad. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, I like Breaking Bad and I've been watching Fringe recently. I like, you know, Ender's Game and Pacific Rim and all kinds of crappy movies I talk about all the time here. But the simple interactivity of the medium of video games makes it to me more engaging than those other mediums yeah um it's something that you have direct personal control over which i think i mean i'm, I'm having a hard time and maybe you can answer this i've been thinking about this a lot recently that in the course of human history outside of maybe like role-playing games or like larping or things mm-hmm. like that I don't know of any other medium in the course of human history where you have as much agency over the the consumption of your storytelling. 
that ah, you are right. you are free in a lot of cases to kind of write your own story. And it, yeah. that's as simple as if you go left rather than right, or if you die rather than not die. Or it's whatever. a very unique product. Yeah, it's it, not like reading a book or watching a movie. Right. Yeah. It's always it can it can be different every time. Yes. And that's part of the magic of the medium is the fact that we've moved past these passive forms of of entertainment to a more active form of entertainment, which is why I started thinking about this because I was thinking about why people get so mad at us when we do Let's Plays and we miss stuff. Yeah. And it's because, unlike a movie or a TV show, if they were playing that game, yep. they could have done the thing that we didn't do. Yeah. So it must be frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, so for that reason, I'd say that, I mean, video games are an integral part of my life. Yeah. Uh, probably always will be. And I think that if I had to choose between books music, movies, and video games, mm -hmm. I choose video games yeah. seven days a week. Well, uh, I think it's you know going to vary from person to person. You know, Sometimes it's an integral part of who you are. Sometimes it's just a hobby. For me, it's an integral part of who I am, but I don't want to be identified as like, that's Jason. He's a gamer. Sure. You know? Sure. It's like, that's, you know, that that's Joe. He's a football player. You know, everybody likes multiple different things. They usually don't obsess over one thing. Uh, uh, yes, video games definitely can provide a lot of extra skill, social activity, hand-eye coordination. I think they are a boon to those people who choose to participate in them. Or sometimes they're a mindless waste of time, and that's okay, too. Sure. It is perfectly okay to have a mindless waste of time. Yeah. Reset it, you know, use it as a palate cleanser for all of the other horrible shit that you have to deal with day in and day out. Mm -hmm. But the more important uh, issue here, Leonardo, is that this oh harlot God. Oh God. <laughs> that you have taken up with, oh God, <laughs> if she really cares about you, why would she want you to get rid of something that makes you happy? That is the long and the short of it. Mm. I was in a relationship like that where the girl wanted me to get rid of my action figures. You know, I don't really buy many of those anymore. Or, you know, stop reading comic books, stop playing video games sure. and, and grow up. Grow up? What does that mean? You know, gr somebody tells you to grow up and they, what, they want you to do that. They mean, they mean give up. That's what I hear. You know, it's... What? So, like, you, you want me to you want me to, to have fun in mowing the lawn and working on the house and, and conforming to... If she's wanting you to do these things, then she, she is being selfish. She's not thinking about you. She doesn't want you to be happy. And, yeah, if you're ignoring her for these video games, then maybe you need to take another look at it. But... For someone to want you to give up something that is that you're really passionate about, mm -hmm. no, no, yeah, you then you need to tell her to reassess. Why would just the the simple blunt question? Why would you want me to get rid of something that makes me happy? Woo! Is people going to be doing uh, embroidery of that particular rant, putting it up on their wall? <laughs> uh, <It's, laughs> yeah, that you, you grab onto the things that you love. And you do them as much as you can because that's why you're here. It's, oh, I mean, you know, there is certainly a point where, you know, we've all read the stories of like, I lost my job. I did, I lost custody of my kid because I'm just playing EverQuest 24 hours a day. Yeah. Know, well, then you're a fucking idiot. You're, you're you an know? addict and, and blah, blah, you're blah. You're an but, asshole. But, you know, there's a, there is a definite case to be made for, I mean, yeah, it kind of depends on, I, I kind of want to, I kind of want to ask him. What was her suggestion that you should do instead of this? Yeah, right. Because I mean, like, I was just reading an article. Watch the other America's day. Next Top Model with her. Yeah. Well, I was reading. I was reading an article the other day. It was talking about how the financial fallout of the the American economy. Right. Like, people don't have disposable income to like go on vacations anymore. It's not like you just you know. Well, I got a week off of work. Let's jump in the car, or let's yeah. jump on a plane, go to California. Let's go to Disneyland yeah. for a week because that shit's expensive. Whereas you could go out and buy, spend sixty bucks on a game, like go through a Steam sale, and get a lot of enjoyment out of that in a kind of a virtual way. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm with yeah. you on that whole like. Uh, I don't know. Did, did Leonardo... They say, did they say grow up? Did they grow up? Well, no, that, that's... a waste of time. Yeah, that, that's what I was told. Yeah. Leonardo, th this isn't about video games, man. <laughs> it's not. 
That's just the symptom of a larger problem. And if I can give you some advice, I had that girl and she had people telling me, uh, other people telling me, uh, <laughs> telling me, you need to put away the childish things and, and so forth. And you know what? We're not together anymore. Yep. I, much later, started dating another girl. And one day she asked me, what is your favorite Christmas present? And I was like, the ad at. I had an ad at when I was a kid. I wish I still had it. Yeah. And it got broken and, and it's gone. You know what I got for Christmas that year? An ad at. An ad at. Yeah. I, and a Millennium Falcon <laughs> and lots of other stormtroopers and snowtroopers and everything. Yeah. And all that. And then later I got like a giant Death Star decal for my office wall. There you you go. know what I did? I married her. <laughs> Oh man! All right, and yeah, as a, as a one last thing that I thought about while we were while you were ranting was that um, I would I would actually be interested to know if this person who considers gaming to be a waste of time considers reading books, watching movies, listening to music, yeah. going to museums, or any of these other things where you're consuming, consuming. media, sure. to be a waste of time. Yeah. Because if they don't, then what you need to do is explain to this person that there is no difference, and that you're just you just have the mindset. Of this is an NES and this is a kid's toy. Precisely. And this is a thing. So, bah. Give her a cunt punt. Hit the road, lady. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that you're more than willing to tell our listeners who come in there. You're just like, fuck that bitch. Yeah. And burn down your job. <laughs> don't, don't burn down your job. Don't, don't burn, don't down, burn down, down anything. All right. Uh, our next question here is from Amy. Uh, or no, Vanessa. Okay. Vanessa says, hello, Jeff and Jason. My name is Vanessa, and I've recently discovered Rage Select through my brother. I'm what? loving the content, the forums, and most of all, Sparkle Fandango. Yay! My question is about online-only games. I've recently watched the two Star Trek movies and wanted to play a game set in space. After a bit of research, I decided on Mass Effect. We got an easy one for you to <laughs> jump into. I know I'm late to the party, Eve, so... Eve online? Is yeah, that don't, don't. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. So I, I turned on the good old Steam to purchase it. While downloading it, I was browsing around, and to my dismay, I noticed a trend that I found a bit disturbing. I mostly play games leisurely and enjoy a good story more than competitive multiplayer, which I suck at, and I noticed a lot of games are becoming online only, having little offline content and no campaign whatsoever. I feel this isolates less hardcore gamers and reflects poorly on the industry as they are not willing to make a unique experience. I know it may be costly for developers, but what attracted me to gaming in the first place were the good stories that I get to shape and enjoy. What do you think about this, guys? Sorry for the rant. Thanks for answering my question. You're absolutely right. Uh, we are seeing a lot of stuff go into online only, and I don't, as I've made clear before, don't usually play a lot of online only stuff. I'll usually just sample it. You know, I really get into Battlefield 4 yeah. and, and Battlefield 3 before that, and et cetera. Sure. Uh, but most of the time, yeah, I just I want to consume a good story. Mm -hmm. I want to get involved in that. Um, we are seeing, you know, the last 10 years or so, a big shift toward, 20 years maybe, uh, a big shift towards online focus where like Call of Duty and Battlefield, it's, it's mostly just uh, um, a vehicle to give you an online, you know, deathmatch experience or whatever. Um, not Battlefield, but Call of Duty. Right. Um, and, uh, but you're not going to see the... the uh, you're not going to see this the single player campaign stuff go away completely. You're just not. Well, I think that I personally think that we're starting to see that we're starting to turn a corner on that shit. Oh yeah. Because I think that um, I, I saw in 2013 way less shoehorned multiplayer than we've seen in years past, um, and I think that uh, I, I think that we're starting to see. Multiplayer games, stuff like Loadout, right, that is focused on multiplayer, that is its own thing as opposed to things that are... Because I think that, uh, and I could be completely off base on this, but I think that between like the years of 2010 and 2013, I think there was a time when every developer said that like we need the multiplayer to keep the legs on this game, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. But I think that they're starting to understand that, that, for, that when you just churn out some crap multiplayer... Nobody's still playing it. It's diminishing returns. Nobody's playing Spec Ops the Line multiplayer still. <laughs> right. Because the thing is that they're all playing Call of Duty yeah. or Battlefield. Yeah. You know, they're not playing. They're playing Team Fortress 2. You know, the returns that you're going to get on that stuff, I think that we're actually starting to see that focus shift more from multiplayer to DLC as a reason to bring you back to the game that you were playing before. Um, so I think that just from a, a, an upper tier view of the industry that you're starting to see that less and less. 
Um, but it it does. I, I I the other thing is that I think that with the rise of the indies. I don't know very many multiplayer games. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's I mean, a good you know, point. You stuff like Monaco or Nidhogg or yeah. you know local multiplayer type games. But you know, you look at stuff last year like Brothers or mm-hmm. Guacamole or you know uh, Gone Home stuff like that. Some of the big stuff, Stanley Parable. None of that stuff had any kind of multiplayer. Guacamole did. Guacamole had local multiplayer, I guess. Yeah, but um, uh, so <laughs> I think that, and I think that Grand Theft Auto Five probably is going to go a long way to showing developers that if you create a good game with a single player storyline you don't need to yeah because really <laughs> gta 5 multiplayer is a mess kind of a mess not a reason to buy the game or at indeed. all i don't know anybody i don't know of anybody who's ever gone like oh shit i'm gonna buy a gta 5 game but fuck the campaign i just want to <laughs> play the multiplayer right, right it's not going anywhere uh, uh yeah it's uh you're gonna see you know shift back and forth but uh yeah i wouldn't worry about it too much i mean you're still gonna find there's there's I know we talk about the homogenization of the big games, but the indie market is flourishing. It's bigger than ever. Yeah. And you're, you're going to be able to find something to scratch your particular itch. Absolutely. Oh, and by the way, if you like Star Trek, you should totally get FTL. I bet FTL. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a hard game. Not, not much story there, but yeah. No. It's, uh... Also, you know what? I, I, this is great because this person is coming into video games like just now. <laughs> oh, my God, the things you have to play. Well, she said she's discovering rage select just now oh okay well maybe so yeah uh okay all right never mind <laughs> play ftl though that game is awesome don't play the star trek games <laughs> yeah uh, our next uh, next question comes in from horace sky or sky says hey guys love the show and would love more guest appearances from allison and any of the other sparkle fandango crew whatever <laughs> What? That was... Is this on? Do you say Well, Mike's on. After oh. all that, after all that, and then I married her. <laughs> keep her the fuck off my show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and this says, FPSs as well as most RPGs have been using the same character types for years. In most cases, you can build a variant of the following, tank, healer, ranged, or balanced. My question is, have we found the most balanced character types for games and or are they being overly used? Also, are there other types, whether a combination of the aforementioned, that developers can explore for more unique gameplay. Thanks for taking my question, or a sky. Mm. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, it's really kind of that paradigm uh, that, uh, like, uh, you know, RPG stories have fallen into. You know, mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're your priest, your rogue, your barbarian, and etc. Uh, I, I I don't want to say categorically. Yep, that's the answer. Mm-hmm. But I can't think of anything else. You know. Well, there's been a shift. Um, and I don't, it's it, sometimes I don't know if people have really noticed it, but it used to be back in the old days that you had your kind of Final Fantasy style stuff, right? Yeah. White mage, red mage, you know, DPS mage, healing mage, yeah. fighter, and yeah. then you usually have like a monk or a thief or something like that. Right. That was kind of your traditional layout. Yeah. Uh, but with EverQuest and WoW, it has like, because it used to be you guys are doing damage and you've got one character to heal, etc. But with the whole MMO philosophy that's out there, it's changed. And this was one of the things, uh, I was talking with somebody about this, that fucked me up with Dragon Age, is that I didn't have as much MMO experience when I first started playing Dragon Age. And Dragon Age is a different style of combat where you're looking to have a tank that doesn't do damage but absorbs damage, right. that can hold <laughs> aggro, yeah. that is healed. That was while a tough you have, lesson for me to learn. Right. You have other DPS characters behind doing the DPS while the tank keeps the aggro away from them. And I feel like that's what we're seeing more these days than um, than that old school kind of Final Fantasy style stuff. Right. And I think that what it comes down to is really um, just what people are familiar with because you can give somebody that MMO layout and, like you and I, immediately know what to do with that. Right. This guy's your tank. This is your DPS. This is your healer. I know what to do with those three characters. I know how they work together. Um, I think that we were actually talking about this earlier that, like, Square Enix has been – like floundering all over the place <laughs> to try to figure out what the next thing yeah. is, um, and it's just a question of how do those how do those classes fit together and what can you do with them that's new. And I know that there's been a lot of games out there, especially multiplayer games, where they've tried to combine those classes, where you'll have a mm-hmm. tank healer or a DPS rogue or something like that, um, where 
to me, whenever you do that, it starts to make everything feel very homogenous. Yeah. Kind of just like, oh, who cares? I don't Right. Like, what does it matter what character you play? Right. As part of the one of the great things about RPGs is is character specialization because yes. it allows you to really customize them. So I think that there's room out there for new stuff. I mean, uh um um uh Banner Saga had an interesting yeah. new system yeah. where there was no I don't I'm pretty sure there was no healing. There was very little magic right. in that game. Right. Uh and you had the stat that was both your health and how hard you were able to hit that was uh that and armor and went back and forth. So there's still games out there that have that are mixing it up. Yeah, interesting takes on the system. Um it's just that if you want to play it safe, you just do that do that MMO style or the old Final Fantasy style, which I, I guess when you think about it, that old Final Fantasy style is really just uh D and D. Right. right? Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, plugged in there, um, and yeah. So I don't know. I'd I'd like to see something different. I was playing Bravely Default. Uh, Bravely Default has an interesting thing where you can sacrifice turns in order to build up. You you basically go brave or default, and you can basically if you go default, it's like a defensive move, but it adds a point to the brave meter. Then you can cash those in to go like multiple times in a row. Gotcha. So you can essentially defend and then build up and then like unleash a bigger amount of attack, and you do it with multiple characters. So there's still interesting stuff going on out there. On the other hand, Lightning Returns is a <laughs> fucking big hot mess, <laughs> and I ugh. can't wait for that review. Yep. All right, Horace, uh, thanks for your question. Our next one comes in from John, and John says, Hey, guys, so lately I've been getting really worried. I keep seeing news and forum posts talking about how the game market is going to collapse soon due to escalating costs. Pretty sure even Jason said something along those lines in the previous episode. Meanwhile, phone games are thriving thanks to the awful free-to-play slash microtransaction progression model. Mobile phone gaming is pretty much dead to me as a result, and now looking at Xbox One games like Killer Instinct, Crimson Dragon, and Forza... I see that they're loaded with content locked away by microtransactions despite you already having to pay for the base game. So here's my question. Do you think that this is going to lead to the death of good games with traditional business model we prefer? I'm worried I'm going to have to give up on games altogether after decades of playing if the future is dedicated to stealing my money. Thanks for reading, John. Well, there's going to be a tipping point. It's only going to go so far. I think we're going to start seeing more and more of it. Yep. Uh, But uh, there will be a point to where it won't be profitable. You might start seeing it in every game. That's possible. Unlikely. You might see it in a lot of games, like maybe most of them, mm-hmm. but it'll be to varying degrees. You know, some of it might just be like uh, customize your character type stuff, yeah, like we saw cosmetic. in Loadout, yeah, you know, cosmetic, cosmetic stuff. stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, there's going to be a saturation point, and I, I don't think it's going to kill everything. I really don't. I don't yep. think it's going to. I don't think it's going to be the way things are done. Well, I, I think that the that the the key thing to remember here is that um, you can you can. You could push gamers a lot, right? Yeah. You could you could slap us around. We've Obviously. already seen that from yeah. DLC. But you know what? We should all remember here on February twelfth, the year twenty fourteen, Project Ten Dollar doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> right? Yeah. Remember yeah. that Project Ten Dollar was a way to try to kill used game sales, mm-hmm. and it didn't fucking work. Yeah. So they dropped it, and they got a, they. I think the EA garnered, or was it Activision? Or it was what, EA. Uh, they garnered. Some, I think they garnered some goodwill by doing that. Um, and I so there's uh, back to the the old thing. The thing that I always say is that if you listeners don't like this stuff to happen, the answer to it is real fucking simple. Don't, don't do it. Do it. Yep, that's right. If you want to go one step further, you don't have to go the step further. But if you want to get real militant about it, if you want to put on your beret and shit and put your hand up, um, don't buy any game that has it because there are plenty of games out there that don't have yeah. DLC day one DLC that don't have. These cash ins, but at the very least, if you don't like this business practice, no matter how cool that thing is, mm-hmm. don't fucking buy it. Don't cave. Yeah, I, I mean, like to go back to a, a earlier news post. Yeah, you know, with the Batman DLC yeah. for Arkham Origins, mm-hmm. I really do want to play more Batman story. Yep, in that DLC that they promise, but I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I'm just no. It's, I'll I'll miss out on that. So, I mean, for my opinion, it's like you look at, you know... you look I at, encourage you to do the same. You look at DLC. DLC, I have my problems with DLC. And DLC has been used in shitty ways before, like in um, Ashura's Wrath, where they locked away the true ending behind <laughs> DLC and all that bullshit. Yeah. But for the most part, if a DLC is worth the money, that's a good thing. Microtransactions, on the other hand, are a bad thing. 
So don't do them. And if you don't do them, then then the companies will stop putting them in the games. And I know that I'm not exactly reaching out to the entire world of video games to to with my message or whatever. But that's the message here: is that you, the the uh, we've said it a hundred times before. But your power is in your fucking wallet. And if you don't buy it, then they'll stop selling it because no company is going to put resources into building a whole microtransaction store if fucking nobody is buying those microtransactions. Um, now, I know for a fact that people are buying the microtransactions. Yeah, it's happening. So, you know, until that happens, they're going to keep on selling it. But, you know, on the other hand, you've got companies out there, companies like Supergiant Games with Transistor, or like, the you know, CD Projekt Red with The Witcher, things yeah. like that. There are plenty of companies out there that aren't looking to milk you out of every you. dollar. Yeah. Uh, even Killer Instinct, a lot of people uh, rankle against that, but it's a, you. It's a free to yeah. You download the front I was, end. It's was, twenty dollars for the whole game, basically. Yeah, I was kind of pissed about it, but then I was like, well, you know, that's. I th- the more I think about it, the more that's like a legitimate way uh, now, to do it. That that pay to pay to wait bullshit. I I hate it. I hate it so much. Every oh, time a game yeah. implements that of like, well, if you just wait for an hour. Is I was speaking of Bravely Default. Bravely Default did that shit to me. I was just like, what are you talking about? Where there's a mechanic where every eight hours you get one of these points that you can use to do some badass shit. Oh, or right. you could totally just go buy them off the store. And it was yeah. like, dude, you were doing so good. <laughs> you were doing yeah. so good. Yeah. So, But yeah, the answer here is that no, it's not going to kill the industry, at least. If it was going to, I think it would have already. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to. And but I, I think it is going to get worse. And I think that, you know, you talk about mobile games. I don't know any serious gamer who or I don't know anybody who would self-identify as a gamer, like going back to the question about mm-hmm. how how uh, impactful a video game has been on your life. I don't yeah. know anybody who would answer that question by saying very much had a big impact on my life that only plays phone games. Right, yeah. it's They've got a console, they've got a PC. They got maybe like that. that'll change as phones become more versatile. I mean, they're pretty tremendous what they can do now. But, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, you know, games are still home. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got a couple more questions. We got one uh, bigger one and one smaller one. Or oh no, we got two two kind of smaller ones. All right, this one comes in from Nando Fifth. Nando Fifth says, "Hey guys, here's my question: Is there any movie, comic book, game, etc. that you really love, but it's something that went under the radar and no one has ever heard of it? Keep up the great work, and thank you for making such an awesome site." Mm. This is I, this is a very open ended question. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But I like answering this question because every time we yeah. can say something different. Yeah, exactly. I mean, especially when he gives us uh, something broad like that, something to recommend. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, plenty. Let's I'm just trying to pick one. Right? Games. Let's see. Zombie Driver is a is a really cool game <laughs> that you guys should play. <laughs> Hostile Waters Antaeus Rising just went up on Steam for like six dollars, and I talk about that all the time. Terra Nova Strike Force Centauri, the old Looking Glass game, that's a really good one. Um, I'm thinking of I don't really know that many. Uh, obs- I, don't, I wonder what movies are considered obscure anymore. Right. No, like, there there are. Have you ever seen the Young Poisoner's Handbook? No, that's I have a not. Hell of a movie right there. Really? Yep. Saw that shit at the Dobie Mall, same place that I mm. saw Ghost in the Shell for the first time. Young Poisoner's Handbook. Yep. I I am going to go with uh, as far as movie goes. I'm going to go with one that's uh, semi obscure. If you're a horror fan, you're probably familiar with it. But uh, George Romero's Martin. Martin. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that, not the sequel to the TV show. Martin. Martin. <laughs> no, okay. no, not that one. All right. No, George Romero's Martin. It's kind of a a, a modern kind of trippy uh, '70s take on vampires. And okay. It's, it's really slow. Jesus, you're all about the vampires today. I know. What's up with that? <laughs> really slow, but very, very good. I like it a lot. Okay. Uh, another another one again. Horror is uh, God. What is it called? Um, the original title is Dead of Night. Death Dream. Death Dream. Death Dream is the the version that I have, and that one's uh, actually oh, I can't remember his name. Bob Clark, the guy that did Black Christmas, directed this. Okay, uh, and he also directed A Christmas Story. Okay, uh, it's oh a, yeah, it's another seventies <laughs> uh, Vietnam uh, story, S- creepy as hell. Okay, uh, that's a good one. As far as books go, um, doesn't really have a huge like national spotlight yet, but I think he's getting there, and that's 
um, he, he's gotten a lot of acclaim for it, but a lot of people still don't know. It's weird because I, I, I think I'm more exposed to him here, being in his neck of the woods, mm. than maybe someone globally or someone up in you know Oregon or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Joe Lansdale and oh, his, okay. his Happen Leonard novels. Okay, they're uh, kind of East Texas set. Uh, so we like buddy, buddy cop, buddy noir sort of. right. stuff. Yeah, oh, they're great. Okay, just so much fun and really quick, brisk reads. Uh, but I don't know if, if they're like New York Times bestsellers. They could be. I, I, I'm not sure. But I always feel like Lansdale kind of belongs to Texas, you know, yeah. uh, even though everybody should know about him. I, you know what? If you have not read every single thing that William Gibson has ever written, go out immediately and read everything that William Gibson has ever written. <laughs> yeah, he's one of my I would, favorite That's authors. not obscure. That's not obscure. <laughs> None of that I know. Is, I know. It's William fucking Gibson, man. Is Ian Banks, is, it, is he obscure? Uh, People know about the, the culture series, player of games? Maybe. Sort of thing. Maybe. John Scalzi, Old Man War. John Scalzi, not, not so much anymore. I actually yeah. just, I would t- did we talk about that I read Red Shirts? Yeah. That was really good. Yeah. Um, I think they're developing like a mini series or how something. About games? Can you think of any games that you obscure play? Obscure games? Obscure games games um you know nothing that i haven't brought up before yeah um i mean we cover everything here yeah <laughs> so something obscure go that... to good old games and buy crusader no remorse yeah <laughs> do that seriously that's the one right crusader there Crusader no remorse is a really fun game yeah uh, do that that is awesome you know i'm trying to think what was there there was a um I never got to play it that much, but I was more I was always interested in playing more of it. There was a game that came Oh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna shove that side, maybe come back to it. If you are a, a young person who was not alive in this particular point in time, go immediately to your computer and buy you're gonna have to buy it off of Amazon because you can't get it on either good old games or Steam. Buy No One Lives Forever One. Yes. No one lives forever two. Fuck contract jack. Don't play contract jack. Don't, don't play that. But no one lives forever one and no one lives forever two. Everybody should know who Kate Archer is. Yes, yeah, so good. The game was so good. Oh, but there was man. a there was another one that was like where you got to be a Bond villain. It was called like Evil Genius. Or something oh yeah, like that. I never did play that. But I, I thought it looked really about. interesting. Yeah, uh, and if you if you like Freedom the no Force, one... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good old one. If you like the no one lives forever games, uh, go watch the uh, the Matt Helm movies with Dean Martin. Oh yeah, and uh, um, and the the Flint or in, in like, like Flint. Flint. With uh, James Coburn, yeah. What those about the, are uh, what uh, old spy parody? So. OSS, uh, like Lost in Rio, OSS seventeen. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. One seventeen or whatever. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't watched those, but I heard they were great. Okay. Um, yeah, I could I could kind of go down a list of older games that people yeah. haven't ever heard of. That's good. Let's go on to the next. All right, one. let's go. On. All right, well we're done because this next question is going to be real short. Okay. Last question comes in from Daniel, and he says, "Hey Jeff and Jason, I've been working at a grocery store for three months now, but every time we start stocking the frozen fries, this discussion comes up. What's the best kind of fries slash fried Ooh. potato? Do you sirs prefer shoestring, crinkle cut, curly, steak fries, potato wedges, waffle fries, or another variety? If you so desire, what restaurant, fast food?" Food or sit down makes the best fries. Thank you for keeping this going, guys. Podcast <laughs> reviews get me through the work day, Daniel. Woo, uh, thank you for the question, Daniel. I prefer crinkle cut myself, really? although I will not turn away any variety of French fries. Yeah, French fries are just God's gift. Man. Fried potato, yes, Crink- fried uh, potato. I am Irish. Season so fries, love my potatoes. Season, season fries, cr- yeah. Fries. Dip them in ranch. Yeah. Dip them in mustard, ketchup. I tell you, whatever, the- man. Put them. Put some gravy and some curd cheese over there. Make your own version of poutine. Yeah. Yes. All of that. The best uh, uh, restaurant. But what's your, what's your preferred down? of choice? Preferred? Yeah. Crinkle cut. Oh, crinkle cut. Right. Okay. Yeah. And who, who is the best crinkle cut? Um, man, I don't know. Yeah? It's a good question. I don't really know about any fast uh, food places that have them, right? You know, but honestly, though, the, the best, the best, like, uh, the best place that has them to me, I, I really like uh, Opal Divines. Uh, okay, uh, they're big. They're not really steak fries. They're just yeah, like just thick, long. But they're not. They're not as thick as steak fries. Okay. But they're battered. Yeah, and those are amazing. Oh, 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 okay. Here it is. Your mom's. They've got great fries. <laughs> those are even better. That's an actual restaurant, folks. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who aren't keeping track, yeah, not <laughs> Jeff's mom. <laughs> not my mom. My mom does make some pretty good French fries, but. Um, for me, uh, the thinner and the crispier, the better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you said that. Yep. Uh, I really like the P. Terry's fries, especially yep. when they leave them in there a little bit long. They Those are good. A little brown. I don't like uh, I don't like floppy fries, so and I'm not a big fan of steak fries. The only fries that suck are when you microwave them. Oh, God. 
That sounds terrible. It's the worst. It sounds if you, terrible. If you reheat them in the microwave, it just yeah. ruins them. Uh, I'll eat them anyway. Cold French fries. Ugh. Cold fr- yeah, yeah, cold French fries is kind of rough. Uh, waffle fries, I'm kind of in and out with it. And like, I usually like like two the good bomb. waffle fries. Uh, chili cheese fries. Your mom's chili cheese fries? Just chili cheese fries anywhere. Oh. Anywhere. Have you had Hop Dottie's chili cheese fries? No. Those are good. Ooh, shit, son. I'm going to do that tomorrow. That's good, man. Uh, I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um, yeah, so yeah, the thinner and crispier, the better for me. Um, but I'm kind of in the camp with Jason about, you know, if you put a, a thing of fries. The only fries that I will turn away actively that I well, we won't even finish are the Cajun fries from Five Guys. Because mm. they give me fucking shit heartburn, like <laughs> lava chest. I don't know that I've had those, but uh, I eat one of them, and it's just like, <laughs> like the <laughs> like your John Hurt and Alien. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's it. Um, so send your questions in mail at RageSelect.com. Correct. Do not send them to the admin. Correct. And uh, we will see you guys next week with another podcast. Um, I think I'm going to try to get Kevin on next week. Oh, good, because I'm sick of this. (laughs) (laughs) All right, good night, everybody. 